Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu, and a stain who won a stop for who won a movie here on a talk of Ali. When I was below him in Shururi and Fusina, Omin say Ati Amalina, my Yahdi Hilahu Fala Mudilla, Omin Yudlihu Fala Hadiella. When I shall do Allah, Ilaha Illa, Wahda Hula Sharikala. When I shall do Anna Sayyidana, when a Biana. ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي درش يقلل Respected brothers, respected elders, mothers and sisters listening at home. Continuing with the seer of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala In the last session of that hadith, we opened up to this very unfortunate incident that occurred during the Khilafat of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala an. the battle which was never the intention of the Mukhlisin, the sincere followers of Hazrat Ali and also Talha and Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. and it was never the intention of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in fact Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an left Madinatul Munawwara with the intention to meet up with Hazrat Talha and Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhuma so that if there is any kind of misunderstanding in view and in relation to the shahadat of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an, then that can be immediately resolved and which was alhamdulillah resolved immediately Hazrat Talha and Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an were in Basra with the intention to challenge the Sabai sect not with any other intention but Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an felt comfortable to meet up with his brothers and senior companions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Basra. And alhamdulillah it was agreed. The agreement was Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha also agreed. Hazrat Ka'aka agreed. And all of the senior companions that first Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an would secure the Khilafat, strengthen the Khilafat and thereafter would look into the matter of Qisas to apprehend those who had murdered Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, or were partly involved in the Shahadat of Sayyidina Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. Now obviously what had happened, the difficulty was that the challenge is the enemy within the challenge is the enemy within the most difficult thing is Allahu Akbar to ca- combat those who are with you in your circle who stay with you who make salam with you but yet they are your enemies that is difficult Openly you would know that so and so person does not agree with me, so and so person is that, so and so person is that. So the enemy that is within, one is shaitan, your nafs. But with the time of the Khilafat of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, this was the most difficult challenge. 
And even today, unfortunately, you will see, my respected brothers, that it is not those who don't share the same faith with you that make life difficult for you. But rather, it is the same individuals who will say in front of you, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. But yet, shaitan uses them as a tool and, and they don't even realize what is right and what is wrong. What is right and what is wrong? They don't realize. Al-Aman, Al-Hafiz, my respected brothers. And so there's a lot of wisdom when you study the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What we need to understand is the basis. Sahabai kiram ajma'een are the most pure people after Anbiya alayhi musalatu was salam. Most pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised the companions. Whenever the name of a Sahabi is taken, naturally the words radiyallahu ta'ala an come to the tongue. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised them. This certificate is given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is very important for us to understand. So Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an came to Basra with the intention to meet up with Hazrat Talha and Zubair. You had the Sabai sect. Remember that Abdullah ibn Sabah and his followers, the Sabaiyun that came from Misr, Egypt, Kufa and Basra and all the other different regions. Now they knew for a fact that if the Muslims unite and if now the people of Basra have agreed and those who came with Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an have also agreed that we will strengthen the Khilafat first and then look at the laws of Qisas. This would mean a death penalty for the Sabai people. And so death is in front of them. They will know that for a fact there are enough people to testify and witnesses are there. Whoever entered the room of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, the people of Medina are also there. And eventually what will happen is that even in the Khilafat you will have the Ummah chasing them, eventually bringing them back to Medina Tul Munawwara, and they will be beheaded, executed, applying the laws of Qisas, which was very important. And that was something that was very hot at that time. Immediately after uh, the Shahadat of Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and when Khilafat was given to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. And so this man came with a master plan. The conspiracy and Allahu Akbar how shaitan opens the path of kufr. And so he gathered all his followers. Remember this man was pretend, pretending to be a great man. You had reverts, new people who had embraced Islam. He was in Egypt. And so he said to the people that all of us will die. All of us will be killed. Because they understand, their understanding of Khilafat is different to our understanding. Their understanding to Khilafat is different to our understanding. Subhanallah. Even today you go to a Qadiani, Ahmadiyya Qadiani, he will say to you, why are you calling me a Kafir? What right have you got to call me a Kafir? My name is Muhammad. My name is Abdullah. My name is Yusuf. I read the Quran. I pray my salah. I am from the Qibla. But yet the ulama, not one alim, virtually all of the Muslim world, including the, the Islamic world, the Arab world, subhanAllah, have all, all given unanim, unanimously a fatwa that the Qadianis are kuffar. And so you can't just look at what is apparent, what is in front. Subhanallah, it is everything which is so important. And so this was the difficulty also with the Sabai sect. They would come and they would say we are Muslims. And they would say we believe in everything what is taught by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is in Sharia, but that hidden agenda that was there with the Sabai movement. And so he said what we need to do is we need to break the unity of the Muslimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from being a fitna for the Muslim Ummah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from being a fitna for the Muslim ummah. Allahu Akbar. This fitna, Allah save us from that. Huh? And what they did is that he said, said to his people that I want you to camouflage yourselves properly to merge into the ranks of Ali radiallahu ta'ala with the group of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And I want you to push yourselves into the group with Hazrat Talha and Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala. And so what would happen? Nobody would know you. These were new faces. People from Egypt, people from Basra, Kufa. New people were still coming in the zone of Zabuka, which is in Basra. Just outskirts of Basra is a place what is known as Zabuka. And that is where this incident took place. And so you had a lot of people the next day, Alhamdulillah, in the night Muslims were performing Salah together. It was not two groups, it was one group. All of them were together, would eat together, perform Salah together, one Azan. Everything was fine, Alhamdulillah. The next day, the master plan of the Sabai people, you had a group of people. They wanted Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and to be pushed towards the rear, the back. And they were towards the front section of the main line where the battle was about to take place. Or if there was any battle, this was their intention. And so you had the Sabai in both the camps. And then all of a sudden a group of people started shooting arrows. And attacking the opposite group, the opposite camp. And then you already had the Sabai people ready in the other camp. So you had Sabai here and you had the Sabai group there. And amongst the Sabai group, you had the Mukhlisin, the Tabi'een. And you had a few companions who were sincere, including Hazrat Ali, Hazrat Talha, Zubair radiallahu ta'ala. And of course the women were at the back, including Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. This was the difficulty. And so now when you had arrows that were fired from every side, then you had people picking up the sword and saying, treachery comes from the side of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And the people which were with Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala, the Sabai people started shouting, treachery and betrayal comes from the side of Talha and Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. And everyone stood up and started fighting. Allahu Akbar, this was the master plan. And the minute everybody starts fighting, at the heat of the moment, a lot of things happen. And it was difficult for Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala, there was always someone there giving the wrong information to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. That the first line has collapsed. The second line has collapsed. This is happening and this is happening. All the wrong information was given to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and said to his people, then you have the right to defend yourself. You have the right to defend yourself. This was the fatwa given by Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And the command, make sure that you defend yourself. Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an was confused. Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an was confused. What is happening here? Why are people fighting? And an intense fight, a lot of fighting was happening. Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an got very very angry. He mounted on his animal and he started shouting in the name of Allah stop fighting. Stop fighting. There is an agreement between the Muslimin, the people of Basra and Amirul Mu'mineen that comes from Medina Munawwara with Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. But again, the announcement fell on deaf ears. No one would stop. This was the intention of the Sabai people. Exactly what you would picture today, the crisis in the modern world. I mean, picture what is happening in jang e jamal where you have the Mukhlisin, the very sincere people. And that what is happening in the Muslim world, the turmoil that is there, the fitna that is there. Why? Because you have so many people who are of the munafiqeen. And even sometimes a person is used as a tool, he himself will not realize what he is doing. But at the same time he has already given great damage to Islam. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his kalam, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ you have different stages to Jahannam. Different stages of Kufr. But the most harsh and severe punishment will be given to those who are the munafiqeen. Those who have given taklif to the deen of Islam. That is very important for us to understand my respected brothers. So you have the mukhlisin, 
and the groups were fighting. Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala unrealized and he looked at the faces. None of them were the face that he recognized from Medina Munawwara or from Kufa. And he said to them, these are people who are hungry for blood and they wish to spill blood like moths that are eager to fall in fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved this ummah. And then what had happened is that there was a man who shot an arrow towards Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala. Imagine Hazrat Talha from Ashar e Mubashara. And it struck him exactly to the area where he had received a wound in the battle of Uhud. Defending Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the wound opened up and a lot of blood was coming out. He was bleeding heavily. And so his slave, the slave of Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, he said to Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, that I have to take you back immediately to Basra. And so he lifted Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, and he took Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an to Basra. When he took Hazrat Talha to Basra again, he tried to treat the wound and to seal it, but it was extremely difficult. And there was a lot of blood that came out from Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, and eventually Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an also became shaheed. Now there is also this propaganda when you look at tarikh and history. Some of the enemies of Islam say that it was Marwan bin Hakam who shot the arrow at Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala an. Now when you do your research, that is incorrect. Nothing of the sort. In fact Marwan ibn Hakam was on the side of Hazrat Talha and Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an. And that is why Hazrat Amir Muawiyah had appointed him to be in charge of Medina Munawwara and Makkah Mukarramah later on. So Marwan ibn Hakam was a very powerful man. And what we need to realize is that some people even say that Marwan ibn Hakam gave information about Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an aliyazu billah. That, that is also untrue. We need to understand that Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi was very strict in entering any reports, any hadith into his book to make sure that every individual was muttaqi. He has also entered the name of Marwan bin Hakam in his kitab. And one report comes from Marwan ibn Hakam. So the ulama have mentioned if Imam Bukhari had any kind of doubt that he is the one who shot an arrow at Talha ibn Zubair who was one of the Ashara Mubashara then Imam Bukhari rahmatullah would not have included Marwan ibn Hakam into his kitab. And so again we have to be very very careful. When you read books you have to be careful. Allahu Akbar. It's highly dangerous my respectable. In fact even when you sit in majalis you have to make sure that a person is a proper scholar and that he knows what he is talking about. Otherwise wrong information can be given to that individual. So it was not Marwan ibn Hakam. Salah ibn Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an became shaheed. Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an, subhanallah, he was the main man in charge. When he looked at what was happening, Hazrat Talha became shaheed in the very beginning, right from the outset. Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an looked at everybody what was happening, and he knew that this is fitna again. And so he thought that the best option for me is to leave Zabuka, the battlefield, and just to move out. Perhaps if they look at a Sahabi, Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an turning away and moving out, maybe this will stop people fighting. Or at least this would have some kind of effect upon uh, the Sabai people that are there. And so there would be a bit of pressure. Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an stood up and he moved away from the battlefield Zabuka. It is said a man whose name was Ibn Jarmuz. A man whose name was Ibn Jarmuz. He confronted Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an and unexpectedly he attacked Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an and Hazrat Zubair radiallahu ta'ala an also became shaheed. I imagine two great companions from Ashar e Mubashara were made shaheed in this battle, Jang e Jamal. How difficult it must be for Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Everything started by who? the Sabai people. And they were in great numbers, not a few, great numbers. Uh, a few here and a few there. And that is what you call dirty politics amongst the Mukhlisin. 
Now these events have only happened with the most pure, most pure who was sahaba kiram ajma'een. And so this is ibrat, a lesson for the ummah, that you have to be very, very careful. You have to be very, very careful. The ummah has to be very, very careful. Subhanallah. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala, and after the first round of the battle, in one narration it is said that he embraced his son, Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala, and Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala was crying. And he said to his son, Hassan, it would have been better if death came to your father 20 years before this day that I see. It would have been better if death came to your father 20 years before this day that your father has seen. That is how painful it was for Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Because it was never the intention of any of the companions, none of the tabi'in to fight. And so he said this to Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala. And now what had happened, my respected brothers, is that, remember this battle has been given a name. The battle of the camel. The battle of the camel. In Urdu it is known as Jange Jamal. Jange Jamal. Now the reason why it is the battle of the camel, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was given a camel by Hazrat Ya'la radiallahu ta'ala an from Makkah Mukarrama. A very strong camel. And she was sitting in a kajava, in a hauda, something like a small compact carriage uh, or a compartment which would also uh, be a means of her hijab so she would sit inside and she would travel from Makkah Mukarrama to Kufa and then she came to Basra when she came to Basra obviously the ladies were on the other side but when she realized when news was given to Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that a lot of fighting is happening now between the people of Basra and those that came with Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha lifted up her hands and started making dua. What to do? This was not our intention. In fact, we came here, Hazrat Talha came here, Hazrat Zubair came here with the intention to chase the Sabai people. And here, it is the Sabai people who are taking control. And so she thought that the only option she has, Hazrat Talha is Shaheed, Hazrat Zubair has become Shaheed. And she felt that now it was for her to do something. So she said to the people that were around, and the people who were around her were the people from the tribe of Azd, the Azdi tribe. So she said to the Azdi tribe, I want you to take me in my camel in the middle of the battleground, where one can feel the heat of the battle, the main zone. Take me there. Perhaps if the people look at the wife of Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on a camel that a lady is here, they will stop fighting. So this was her plan. She wanted people to stop fighting. So she said to the, the Azdi tribe that let's, let us all go there. And so the Azdi tribe was accompanying Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. The man who was holding the reins of the camel was a man whose name was Kaab ibn Sur. Kaab ibn Sur. Now Kaab ibn Sur was the famous judge in Basra. A very famous judge in Basra. And he was holding the reins of the camel. And Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala ana gave Kaab a mushaf, a Quran. And said to Kaab, that Kaab as you enter the battlefield, lift up the kalam of Allah, the Quran, and say to the people, for the sake of Allah, stop fighting. And obey Allah and His Rasul. Follow the command of Allah and His Rasul. Maybe this will prevent and stop people fighting. So Kaab ibn Sur took the Mus'haf and slowly holding on to the reins of the camel, he took uh, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in her hauda towards the battlefield. And as she entered from the back, from the rear, going slowly towards the front, now Hazrat Kaab ibn Sur was making an announcement Stop fighting in the name of Allah. I have the mushaf here given to me by Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. A lot of the people that were close to Hazrat Kaab ibn Sur stopped fighting and were listening to him. 
Now there was panic now with the Sabai people. The Sabai people were people who were, if you were sitting down, if you were a Mukhlis Tabi, they would come and taunt you. What are you doing? If you don't fight, you will be killed. Make, stand up. It is your haq to fight. And because there was no information given to them. And so, when Ka'ab ibn Sur got there, what had happened is that some of the Sabai people realized that the only way to stop Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha getting into the middle, otherwise it would have some kind of an effect upon the Muslimin. They, in a group, attacked Hazrat Ka'ab ibn Sur with a barrage of arrows all directed at him. And immediately he also became shaheed. He fell down and subhanallah even the mushaf fell down on the ground. When Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha slightly opened the hijab, the curtain and the veil and when she saw that no one was holding on to the reins of the camel, some of the people from the, of the Azdi tribe were coming forward trying to control the camel. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha lifted up her hands and she was weeping and she started cursing the people in the battlefield realizing that these are the same people who murdered Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, who are now fighting between Hazrat Ali and the Mukhlisin who were from Basra same people who murdered Hazrat oh, for, for Hazrat Talha and Zubair to become shaheed also Ka'ab ibn Sur and many of the Tabi'een and now they were they wanted to attack Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha lifted up her hands and she started making baddua cursing the people and in a supplication she was saying may the lanat be of Allah upon those who have murdered Usman radiallahu ta'ala may the lanat be upon uh, those who have murdered Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and slowly the people who were close to Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, they started also chanting the same slogan and they started sending the supplication of curse and baddua also at the people who murdered Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anha. now this was the only echo towards the front line Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha could see this camel and realized that obviously it must be Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, and he panicked. And now as he could hear what the Basri people were saying, the people of Basra, that they were cursing the people who murdered Usman radiallahu ta'ala anha, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha also joined in the curse to show that there was only one unity. And he said that of course the lanat of Allah be on those who murdered Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and perhaps by giving baddua they will realize that those who are not amongst the sincere Muslim it might open up, open up something in their heart and so this was the only sound in the battlefield now the difficulty was wallahi my respected brothers these were people who were merciless no haya the sabai people and they started now shooting the arrows towards Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and if one could describe how it must be, how that compact carriage must be in which Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was, perhaps one can say that that carriage was looking like a hedgehog. That carriage was looking like a hedgehog. So many arrows were shot at it. And Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was all alone in there. It was only Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha and realize that if anything happens to that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, imagine how difficult it must be. She is the wife and the most beloved of the Khadija al-Kubra to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and quickly said to a group of people, selecting the right individual, again making sure that uh, this mas'ala of mahram is there. And so he appointed Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr. Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr who was the brother of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and said to him, he was with Hazrat Ali and said to him that immediately go and cut the ropes of the, the carriage which is tied between the two humps of the camel and secure Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and immediately get her out because the Sabai people were targeting the, the, the hauda and slowly remove Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha from her position. And he even said, 
take her to Basra and take her to the house of Abdullah ibn Badila. Abdullah ibn Badila at, at that person's house. So Muhammad bin Abu Bakr and a group of Tabi'een that were there very slowly with a lot of difficulty managed to get to the front and he cut the ropes uh, that were tied to the humps of the camel and very slowly he said to the sister that it is Muhammad bin Abu Bakr, your brother and Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and subhanallah Allah made a passage for her she came down and from the Kajawa, from the Hawda she went with the brother and she was taken to Basra when Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha left things then slowly ceased and eventually the fight stopped eventually the fight stopped and Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an would go and visit those that were wounded from both the camps and he would look at this brother and look at that brother and he realized that all of them were amongst the mukhlisin and he would make dua for them but this was all instigated and stirred up by the Sabai people it was something that was out of the control of Hazrat Ali out of the control of Hazrat Zubair, out of the control of Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala, and even Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, who got to the middle, and had to be then taken, and moved out from that position, because it was highly dangerous for her, and then she was taken back to Basra, it was a difficult situation, now we need to realize, that a lot of the people, especially those, who are not from the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'at, people who even today don't have respect for the Sahaba even today have don't don't honor Sahaba Kiram Ajma'een no one respected these are that this is the same generation even today same generation it, it goes all the way back to the time of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala they had no honor for Sahaba Kiram Ajma'een and even today in the year 2011 they have no honor for Sahaba Kiram Ajma'een you will read in the books and they will want to exaggerate in order to defame sahaba kiram ajmain and they will say oh there were so many sahaba kiram ajmain and hardly more than five or six companions were there the only famous companions were three without the intention to fight four or five but hazrat uh, another muhaddis says that if it is more than four i am a liar if it is more than four i am a Hazrat Sirin, Ibn Sirin, Rahmatullah alayhi has said that. So you had hardly any individual. But in their books it is written, for example, the famous Shia uh, historian, Abu Makhnaf writes that 20,000 people died. How many? 20,000. That is, if you do your research, in Qadisiyah, which was a battle that continued for many, many days, According to one narration, this battle started at the time of Zawal, and by sunset everything was over. In one narration. Battle of Qadisiya was a fierce battle. And in that battle, eight and a half thousand Muslims were made shaheed. How many? Eight and a half thousand. The battle of Yarmouk, which was again an intense fight between the Muslims and the non-Muslims, and in there only 3,000 Muslims were shaheed. And here you'll find that the historians have this habit of exaggerating. And some have said 25,000 died. Some have said 30,000 have died. And so this again is nothing but speculation, absurd speculation, which is against the research of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaat. So for example, you have the famous man who's done a research, Dr. Khalid ibn Muhammad. Dr. Khalid Muhammad, Ibn Muhammad, he has written in his, uh, in, in his beautiful masterpiece in the Arabic language, he writes that to his knowledge, maybe more than a hundred people had been killed. More than a hundred people had been killed. And he says, if we were to double that amount, two hundred people were killed. Never mind ten thousand or twenty thousand or twenty-five thousand or thirty-five thousand. How many people? Only two hundred people. And so 200 people again were made shaheed, but this was a difficult moment. Again, everything started by the Sabai people. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an thereafter went and he attended to those that were wounded. It was a difficult situation. He even went to visit Hazrat Aisha 
radiyallahu ta'ala anha and he greeted her and Hazrat Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha also gave the full respect and honor to Amirul Mu'mineen Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala inshallah in the next few sessions we will also cover the status of Hazrat Aisha who was Hazrat Talha and Zubair radiyallahu ta'ala so that we clearly understand that there was no hidden agenda for Hazrat Talha or Zubair radiyallahu ta'ala to come to Basra these were individuals who were sincere and given the basharat of Jannah. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.